Hey everybody, Matthew here again, back with another video of Farm Your Yard. We're here today at Columbia's Agriculture Park and we're going to be talking all about vermicomposting or worm composting. First, what is vermicompost? Second, we're going to cover everything you're going to need to know to get started on your own worm bin. We're going to talk about how to use that finished compost product on your vegetable gar garden or on your house plants. So what is vermicomposting anyway? Well, I like to describe it as a partnership between worms and humans. Basically, we provide them with a, a house and they provide us with compost or worm castings. So why would you do it? Yeah, it's cool. It's a good way to get rid of your vegetable scraps, but why would you do it in, instead of normal composting? Well, one of the big things is it happens in this box. So you can have this box in your kitchen or basement as long as the temperature is between about 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a pretty nice temperature for your worms to thrive in. In the wintertime, maybe you don't want to walk out to your compost pile, so you can just put your scraps directly in the bin. Another couple benefits of vermicomposting is that it's faster than normal composting. So these scraps here will be turned into that in just a few months, maybe four, four months or so, whereas a normal compost pile, you have to probably have to wait a whole year for it to happen. Um, not only that, but the worm casting, the product that you get from it, is more nutritionally dense and rich um, than normal compost. This, this compost, it's, very, it's full of nutri nutrients for the plants, but it's also full of living and active microbes, which aid the plants in growing and aid the plants in, in extracting nutrients out of the soil. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to construct your worm bin. Uh, right here, I have a plastic tub, a Rubbermaid tub. Um, one thing you'll notice about it is that it is opaque. It doesn't allow any light through, and that, that's important for the worms. They don't like they don't like the light. They like dark spaces. We're kind of simulating a a natural worm environment with this. The next thing we're we're going to need to keep in mind is that the worms will need their bin ventilated. So we're going to drill some holes into the side to allow some movement of air in and out of the of the tub. One question I get a lot is how big should my worm bin be, or what? What kind of container can I use for it? Well, it doesn't really matter too much. I like the, a container this size because I feel like it gives me a good amount of compost where I feel like I am actually actually have a, a couple shovelfuls when I'm ready to put it on my garden. If I went too much smaller than this, it might be a little more trouble than it's worth. But you can go a little bigger if you want or, or a little smaller. It just depends on what you have. Um, so let's take a look at actually building this. I'll get my drill out here. and. What I like to do is drill holes um, along each side just to make, there's make sure there's plenty of holes uh, for oxygen flow. Woo! It's a powerful drill. <laughs> okay, so we have all our, our holes drilled into the side of the box. I put about 10 on each side. That should be plenty. So I'll show you. Open it up here. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is add down our bedding of dry uh, shredded paper. It's dry now, but we're going to we're going to moisten it. And I add about a an inch and a half of shredded paper. This is just some some grocery bag material um, and some packing paper. You can also use little bits of cardboard. But if you shred it up like this, there's there's more surface area, which is which is good. Okay, so the next thing we do is we get a spray bottle and just mist that paper like this. And we're gonna do this for a little while until the pa paper is is pretty wet, until it kind of it kind of starts to just maybe just puddle up at the bottom of the bin. You sort of want to toss the paper around as you're doing this to make sure all the sides of the paper get wet. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So as you can see, this this paper started to clump up a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is add the worms. 
I've got a worm bin that I recently started last week with some worms in it here that we'll be using. Like that. You can see them wriggling around. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to start uh, transferring my worms over to the new bin. These worms are a specific type of worm. They're not your normal earthworm. They're called red wigglers. And red wigglers particularly like to digest kind of decomposing material. So earthworms that you have in your backyard, they like to basically filter feed the dirt um, that they live in. But these red wigglers really um, can digest um, decomposing food. So you want to make, make sure you, you get red wigglers. And we bought these from a place called Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. There's a link down in the description for you. Okay, so we, we've got our paper at the bottom. We've got our worms on top of that. Um, and then the last thing to do is to add some vegetable scraps or fruit scraps. So I've got here a piece of a pomegranate, some banana peels, some coffee grounds, um, apple core, uh, some more bananas, apples. There we go. Okay. That's plenty for them. So the last thing we need to add to this bin before it's complete is some form of grit. So worms digest food in the same way that birds do. They have a gizzard. And so they need to eat something gritty in there to help them grind their food because they don't have any teeth. Um, so there's some different sources of grit. Um, one source is very extremely fine sand, if you can find it. Um, some people crush up eggshells. Um, some people add rock dust. I tend to just get some gritty soil that has some, just feels gritty in my hands when I, when I, when I feel it. Um, so I've done that today. today. I've got a couple handfuls of just some, some real gritty soil that has some small, very small rocks in it. And I'm going to add that to our, to our worm bin here. Okay. There we go. Doesn't need a whole lot. And now we're finished. All right, so we have the worm bin built. Um, now I want to talk to you about a little bit about what you, you can expect in your first few weeks and your first few months of, of owning this worm bin. Um, it'll take the worms maybe a couple weeks to really acclimate to their environment. Another big question is how much are you going to be feeding your worms over those first few weeks? Well, you don't want to overfeed them. Just put just put enough things in that they have enough to get started, like I, like I did, a couple banana peels. We don't want to do too much. Um, and then once they eat that up, then add some more. So they're not going to be eating a whole lot in those first few weeks, uh, especially if you order them. Uh, they'll be a little dehydrated when they first get to you, so you, you want to put them in the bin, let them rehydrate, um, and then it will be a little while before you notice them eating any of the food that's breaking down. Um, so after it's after it's going, uh, it'll take about maybe maybe six months before you feel like okay, I could I could take some of the worm castings out of here and add it to my garden. Um, so how do we harvest our our worm castings? Well, uh, the best technique um, that I found is is by basically scraping all that content um, to one side of your bin. So once once your bin is about maybe halfway full or so or a little more, you're going to want to use your hands and just move everything to one side of the bin. Um, and then on this other side, you're going to put some fresh, some fresh bedding and some fresh vegetable scraps. And then over time, those worms are going to move from that pile of finished worm castings into the new material um, where there's food for them to eat. Um, and then couple days later after after you've put that in you can come in and remove the worm castings and they'll all be over on the other side so that's the easiest way uh, to do it because you want to be able to remove your worm castings put it on your garden without uh, removing all your worms because uh, you want to keep your worm, worm bin going okay so we talked about how to build your worm bin how to harvest the the worm castings now we're going to talk about what you can do with those castings so here I have a little bit of finished worm compost here, some finished vermicompost. And 
you can either add it to your vegetable gar garden or to some of your house plants. So here I've got a, a snake plant. Um, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this vermicompost <coughs> onto the top of the, the soil here. Um, I don't want to put in too much. This Remember, this vermicompost is, is more nutrient dense than your typical backyard compost. Um, so a little bit goes a long way. So there we go. This snake plant just had a fresh meal. Let us know any thoughts or questions you have in the comments below, and uh, thanks for being here for an episode of Farm Your Yard.